Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 258. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Wills. Hello, Norman. Hey there, man. How are you doing? I am slightly sore in the throat. Oh no. Probably shouldn't be doing that voice. No, I, sh- I shouldn't. I shouldn't. But it's fun. How have you been, man? It's been a while. All life, my friend, life. Been working full time, working on my writing, and working on not going insane. The latter is sadly failing. Uh, at least you're getting paid. Yes, paid to go insane. <laughs> but you do that for free. Oh yeah, true that. I mean, on a weekly basis. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's much fun talking about horses. So anyway, also joining us today is Twilight Genesis. G'day, Norman. Hello, man. How are you doing? I'm alright. Just having a good night in. Ah, cool, 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 cool. Did anything productive today? I uh, just went and watched Hentai Carmen at a mate's place. Great movie. Absolutely hilarious. And The Raid, which is just badass. Alright. Both are good movies, I heard. Well, I know The Raid. We're not sure about Carmen. Yeah, need, need to watch it in person just to know. But still. Just be sure you wear a paper bag over your head so no one knows who you are. Isn't that paper bag, man? Well, obviously. Paper bag, man. Anyway, uh, let, let's get started with today's news. Uh, there's a lot of movie talk and, yeah, nice segue there. Try talking about movies. Uh, the My Little Pony movie trailer is released. Yay! Yay! We sound so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, this trailer is not uh, let's just say that this is not the trailer we want like it's giving us nothing it's just a teaser trailer still let the the general public know that ooh there's a movie coming out that's that's all it is it's it's just a teaser trailer that's it but what we got out of it is a few animations of the ponies walking flying wing and owing pinkie pie is just jumping around so that's good and ponies in toon boom not bad not bad Oh, yeah, the animation is very smooth. I mean, uh, that's to be expected. I mean, Toon Boom is a wonderful program. It's no flash. And the best part about it is that even if you're using puppets, which you can do somewhat use puppets in Toon Boom, it's a different-ish system, but you, it just looks a lot better, a lot smoother. True, and a lot of more work <laughs> goes into it, too. So, yeah, that's cool. Oh, yeah, a lot more work. That, that's what a good budget for a movie can do. It can let him really go at it. True, but it's also the love for it. Like, a big budget movie, uh, they can have all the budget, but if it's not good, it's not good. I guess. True. And Troy, are you excited for this? I, I know your country's going to play this. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I quite look forward to the movie. I think we've got an expectation of about 30 plus bronies most likely going in my city alone to see the movie. <laughs> Uh, can you rent out the whole, uh, whole hall? Like, uh, can, can you do that? Like, I, I mean, there's... technically, if we decided to buy all the tickets for one screening, we could. Well, technically, yeah, that, that's true, but is it possible? Or, or only if you buy out the tickets, <laughs> then yeah, it's technically possible. I wonder how much that would cost. <laughs> Quite a bit, I imagine. True, true. <laughs> uh, but still, uh, that's awesome, that's awesome. But honestly, when I look at this trailer, it's not that good. The color scheme is a bit off, you know what I mean? Well, the color scheme isn't exactly off, it's the shadows that look weird. And they look all basically way too dark and heavy in certain areas. My guess is that just something got screwed up. Well, true, and talking about screwing up, uh, it seems that we're not the only one to... I've noticed this because the art director for the movie, um, Rebecca Dart, noticed it too. And people were asking her about it. And I think she commented on EQD for this one. Uh, her explanation is they didn't convert the 16-bit image to 8-bit properly and it crushed all the shadows. I'm so depressed. And she also said that... Um, and someone asked her, well, if you... As the art director do agree with this teaser is badly done, it means whoever did this really mess it up. We are at the starting point yet again. And she replied, I never would have approved this. And yeah, she's saying that the animation is a lot better, so 
uh, trust her. Like, it's much better than this. And you know what? Yeah, um, I'm going to say I know a bit of Toon Boom and how it can work. And yeah, it should be better than what's been shown. Like, come on. It probably just was, like I said, I, I'm not that up to date on Toon Boom and how the automatic shadows work. Because that's what you can do is you can actually create an automatic shading with it. And you just gotta set where the the body is on it as well for the for the program to do it automatically. So probably just a combination. Somebody just is like, well, we gotta decrease the size of this video so it fits on this particular resolution for broadcasting. And when they did that, well, yeah. And the problem with certain trailers, like if you notice some of the trailers that are out there. Most of them are done by uh, contract workers, so that means uh, they're not done in-house. But I'm thinking this pony trailer is done in-house, so that's one theory. Uh, I don't know, but I'm still excited for this. And I'm not sure if it's going to be shown in my country, which is sad. Ah, uh, That just means you get another excuse to come visit me, Norman. True. <laughs> yeah, get, get on the boat, go visit him. Yay! And then when the immigration officer asks what I'm doing here, I'm saying I'm gonna watch a movie. <laughs> no, no, better yet, don't don't get a boat. Make your own raft and steal some sea turtles and have them <laughs> drag you to it. Uh, I'm sure that's illegal somehow. No, no, no. It's, it's not animal cruelty if you if you set them free afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, uh, but still, uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Uh, but still, if you can't wait like uh, me, probably you can get a movie poster. There's a high resolution version of the movie poster out, and it's a whopping three seven five zero times five seven hundred in resolution. So yay, that's huge. Very very large. Absolutely massive. Like my ego. Just <laughs> show oh, you. But honestly, um, looking at this huge poster, uh, is it me or is the logo a bit glittery? Oh, man, right. the, the glitter, even in the trailer, the teaser trailer, the glittery effects way over the top. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, we're not the only ones to notice. AC Race Best made a video gag all about the glitteriness of the trailer. <laughs> Quite amusing. I also think the shadows look pretty dark in the poster as well. Could be the conversion thing again. Yeah. Which Most doesn't likely, make sense. I think. Which doesn't make sense. What? Why? Or it could just be seeing it in a new animation style, not used to looking at it in. Mm. Seem a bit off. No, no, no. Re remember that one Twilight Sparkle standee? Yeah. That looks good. Like, even with the shadows and whatnot. But, uh, I don't know. This could be another color thing where people didn't really... Eh, I don't know. Some, something just went wrong somewhere along the line. So it wasn't picked up till too late. True. But you have to remember, there's also the toys that came out. And the toy colors for the picture, I mean, not the physical toys. The box colors for those are pretty good. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's just me and my... It might uh, just be the poster. It's sort of stylized. Probably. Well, these, they, they, they look to be like, uh, you know, stills from... Uh, maybe not stills. Because um, I do remember Twilight at least being in that pose in the teaser trailer. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's still stills from the movie. So that could be. And you know what? If you take a look see at Fluttershy properly and you zoom in... Uh, they didn't really do the eyes justice. Yeah, no, her eyes just don't look as nice as they should. Yeah, I, I like Will said, there's new animation style, so we'll have to wait and see what they do with this. Can't wait though. Uh, by the way, I uh, heard some friends who are at a convention now, um, Type Onicon, they say that they revealed some more trailers and animatics for the movie. So, yay. I'm very jelly. Uh, I'm jelly. Dang it. <laughs> I wonder how long till they wind up on YouTube. I doubt it because the Thai Pony Con is mostly catered for the younger 
pony fans, so probably not. But who knows? Probably it might be. Probably Hasbro thinks that uh, it's time. It's about time to put it up on the YouTube's. So we'll probably get that. We're probably going to get a whole bunch of uploads first of the uh, trailers from someone's phone quality filmed in vertical. <laughs> oh no! Oh, jerks who film in vertical. And we vertical. won't be able to hear half of it because they'll be right next to somebody going "woo." <laughs> That is true. That is true. Uh, oh man, this, that that'll be annoying. God dang it! Uh, but anywho, on to the last news. <laughs> uh, Toy, we're heading to Australia. Yay! I wish this could be a happier story, but it's happy in some case. How do I want to do this? You know what? I'm going to read for random. TCI in Australia creates a giant pony mural in remembrance to Brony employee. This is TCI company in Australia. One of their workers is a big pony fan, Big Brony, and he recently passed. And the company to commemorate him created a room dedicated to him. It even has a big giant mural done by Citra 360 and um, stained glass, not really stained, um, frosted glass windows. And it's really cool. And the company to do this, they're really cool to do it. It's very rare for a company. It must have been someone who meant a lot to a lot of the people that worked there. Yeah, that's true. So it's very nice. It's very nice for them to have done this. Yeah. Plus, hell, I mean, Tercer is going to feel great for them. I mean, sad is like, oh, one of my fans died. But also, holy crap, my art is being used to honor the dead. How many artists could say that? True. <laughs> well, by the way, uh, what yeah. is a TCI? I have no idea. <laughs> After Googling it, it seems like one of those telecommunication company? I, I, There's, I think, quite a few things that you can find by looking at TCI, uh, which doesn't help at all. I know. Oh, you just do TCI in Australia. Yeah, after doing that, you won't get a really good answer, too. But still, the company's pretty... Nah, the company's pretty awesome to do so. I mean, he, that... Oh, worked. you're right, man. We get everything from teleconsultants to Tokyo Chemical Industry to training and schedule Australia to performance wholesale to Auto cosmetic surgery clinic. <laughs> yeah. But the, okay. the, the, the employee has to be someone that's really awesome for the company to do so. I mean, dang, dedicated room for him. Still, still. He will be missed. He will be missed. And well, that's the news for this week. So moving on to the next topic, what has been entertaining us? So I'm going to let... You know what, Will, since you haven't been on for a while, what has been entertaining you? I've been playing a few games, but I can't play much because my GPU went... Uh, what about your console? I only got a PS4 and we all know PlayStation doesn't have any games. <laughs> Says the guy who finished Final Fantasy XV. Yeah, that took me, what, a week and a half? Wow, that's short? Really? No, I I, I just was addicted to it and played <laughs> over 80 hours of it. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Well, what I currently have been playing has been um, Wildlands, which is an okay game. It's got its problems. It's got a lot of glitches. But I'd say it's definitely the kind of game that if you get together with a bunch of friends... Well, pretty much anyone who says any game can be pretty great once you get together with a bunch of friends. But I like Wildlands because I like I like team-based shooters where we have to work together to silently sneak through and plot our course of how we're going to stealthily take this enemy base and work out taking out the snipers and doing synchronized shots as we slowly creep into the base to get to our objective and then realizing that the AI bugged in one corner and suddenly we're spotted and then basically say screw it and go loud and start blasting everything like we're Gears of War on. That's not a word! As we say in Payday 2, press 3 for stealth. Grenades <laughs> are the best silent weapon. And isn't, isn't, isn't it like F3 is what's bind to use your mask or is that G? Um, G. G, alright. Because, uh, yeah, I, I changed uh, who, my... Who's bright idea? Whose bright idea was it to have the usual grenade button be the freaking start your mask? And why can't you take your mask off? Seriously, if you haven't broken stealth, why can't you take off your mask? 
<laughs> I don't know, man. It's the game design. Like, I have a few problems with it. Like, especially in stealth, when you take down a enemy opponent, something like that. And suddenly the radio beeps. Like, why did the radio beep? What? 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 I mean, that's annoying. But in the end, um, mods help a bit. <laughs> I guess there's also the fact that oh you can only stealth kill technically three or four people before it's like no not now now you got to go loud because no one believes you after the fourth one <laughs> yeah, which true. I guess is real is okay I can understand that but at the same time okay then you give me a mission filled with sixteen enemies you can only kill four of them good that's not a word luck. oh sorry you're gonna have to censor that one but <laughs> good luck but still um, there's a mod called Silent Assassin. And you can kill as many as you want till you got spotted. Uh, then you need to do the whole answer radio thing. If they alert the guards, then yeah, you go loud. I think probably the funniest one that happened was on the uh, one payday two mission where you have to do stealth in that warehouse at night. And oh. you have to do stealth because the second you break stealth, you have 60 seconds to leave the map. Oh, you're talking about Shadow Raid. Oh, my favorite. Yeah, Shadow Raid. And, you can uh, do that loud. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, but you have to have everyone working together and everyone has to have disruptors. True, you can ECM rush the place. Yeah, but what uh, what happened though is we had a group, we literally were, it was the last item and I was the one carrying the armor, so it was slow as heck. And it's just like, I was walking along and then I got spotted and it's just like, hurry up, hurry up, it's so like, they're shooting everybody, and I'm carrying the armor, moving as slow as possible, it's just like, you know, 60 seconds is not enough! Uh, well, probably if we're in the mood, we can play. But anywho, Twy, what about you? What has been entertaining you? Uh, I've been jumping between Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist, Warframe. Oh, cool. Warframe, the game, or? Yeah, Warframe, the game. They got a new, new Warframe was released, so I've been trying to farm for that. Oh, alright. Well, by the way, uh, I saw you playing Yu-Gi-Oh! on Steam, and I tried to, you know, look for it on my Steam, and no, uh, no, it's not out. Like, I think it's region specific. That's weird. I've never heard of region specific. Well, I don't have, uh, Metal Gear uh, Revengeance on my end, which sucks. Really? Yeah. That's, that's really weird. Yeah, um, Probably one of those things where Konami wants to control the uh, flow. It does make sense because uh, their game is Asian, so probably having it on Steam doesn't really make sense because they want to try and sell out consoles. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I know we get region-blocked games here in that we have games that don't pass the rating stage, so they get banned. Mm. We can't get Hotline Miami 2. Uh, that sucks for you guys because of some of the DLCs for PD. Yeah, the community stuff, yeah. Yeah, oh man, that sucks. I think they should have made a point where, I mean, I know they're releasing a lot of DLC packs, but uh, I think they've released way too many to the point of where, I don't know. I think they should have done something like any DLC pack that we released last year, it's now free and anyone who bought it gets like an extra bonus drop or something. Mm, There is the Game of the Year edition that gives you a lot of the game with the DLCs and the sale that they have for some of the old DLCs are at 75% off. So that's pretty good. Oh, okay. So it's like only a dollar for the DLC. Okay. And yeah, well, you don't have to buy all of it. You can selectively buy most of it if you want and find the good ones. Oh, true, true, true. But that's besides the point. And um, Twy, that's about it? Yeah, that's about it. I haven't done too much else. My birthday was over a week ago, so I can't really say that was entertaining me this week. <laughs> Yay, happy belated birthday. And if I do understand right, Will, it's your birthday today, right? Oh, yeah. Yay. It's my birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thanks. Uh, but anywho, as for me, uh, what has been entertaining my week? Well, I've been reading fan fiction. Oh no. Yes. Oh no. Yep. Uh, there's two, and one is Sucker for a Cute Face, done by Eyes World the Weirded. That's how you say his name? Um, I think so. I'm gonna ask my boys here if that's how you say it. 
I swallowed the weirded. Yes, thank you. I swallowed the weirded. It's a uh, hmm, comedy romance slice of life story featuring Adagio Dazzler and Fluttershy. They shipped. Pretty cute. <laughs> that is not the weirdest ship I've ever heard. Sun Dagio is better. Just, just saying. <laughs> I know. There's, I, I, I there, there's ships there too. Uh, but another one is, oops, I'm a coin again by Mirif Moff. Um, okay, this, I think I've actually heard of that one. Uh, it's comedy, quest struggles, mystery, size of life. It's when somehow the Equestria filter for the Equestria Girls universe is unleashed and Sun Set Shimmer is turning to a unicorn pony again. And the other five are turned into, well, their power, the pony up thing. And they are there to find out what happened. It's a pretty good read. Um, this one, I think I read the whole thing in uh, two days, probably. Oh, nice. It's really exciting. Uh, I got some suggestions if you'd like. Ooh, go ahead. Well, there's a couple that have been out that, uh, uh, the Enchanted Library, which is a, uh, um, Raritwai fic. Oh, I think I've heard of that one and put it on my read later list. It's an alternate universe one where basically thousands of years ago, the, the princesses all existed, uh, Twilight, Cadence, um, Celestia and Luna, they all existed at the exact same time. But then the princesses mysteriously disappeared, and this is set in Equestria in the modern times, you know, like the Equestria we see today, with Rarity, Applejack, Rainbow Dash, you know, all those people, all those ponies. But the princes, the immortal alicorns that we know of, they're all nothing but legend. And then Rarity happens to find a very mysterious secret library inhabited by an ancient alicorn princess hidden within the Everfree Forest. Hmm? We realize there would be something to those fairy tales. It, it does a great job of creating this own AU that if you've been a major fan of the series, you'll be like, oh, I see how they connected this and this and that. And you're wondering, okay, so it was set way in the past, so then what's so different and what's so similar about it? And it does have a very adorable romance. Like, I think this is a very well-written romance between the two characters, because that's kind of hard to find nowadays. Uh, another good one uh, that I can recommend is called Pandemic, which is a drama human mystery. Um, it's actually two stories, and the cool thing is that the author has been releasing, whenever they release a chapter, they release two chapters. So, uh, because there's two separate stories running congruent here. On one side, you have a, uh, Lazy Pines, a small town in, uh, Colorado, which is suddenly starting to have a very gigantic wave of influenza strikes the town. And um, it seems pretty benign, and the initial wave of infection passes until other symptoms start ha- happening, like changing of hair color and <laughs> eyes and other weird things. Meanwhile, in what uh, in Canterlot, uh, Twilight sparkles to upon a strange anomaly um, inside the house, and it turns into an all-consuming mystery, figuring out what sort of complex web of Magic stubbornly is maintaining the mystery secrets, and apparently Celestia knows a lot more than she's telling. And so it's like you got these two stories that are running congruent to each other, and you get answers on one end that would have helped the other side, and vice versa. And so really, you the audience is figuring out the mystery a lot quicker than anyone else on either side, and so it's like a combination of you being like, oh, oh my gosh, I know what's going to happen, oh, jeez. And so you're like really hoping that, you know, they're able to figure out what's going on. And, uh, they're already, um, 26 chapters in and it's already at a hundred and, uh, 185,000 words. And I think they're just about to finally have a crossover between the two stories. The two stories are finally going to start merging. So what was I the think. thing? So what was the story called again? Uh, pandemic. Really good mystery. Um, that, that, that it knows how to do a good mystery. Ah, um, that sounds pretty good. Like, uh, I might give it a read. And the final, the final, uh, it's just a one shot that you might like. It's a little silly comedy one. It's called Captain's Crash. Launchpad McQuack tries out for the Wonderbolts. <laughs> what? 
That's all that needs to be said about it is Launchpad McQuack tries out for the Wonderbolts. Ooh, is it again? Captain's Crash. Well, I know what I'm rating tomorrow. Oh. It's very well written and quite, quite funny. And also, it, it was perfectly timed because the author wanted to write it because of the new reboot for DuckTales, which oh. I really want to see. Yeah. Captain's Crash. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. It's 6,000 words and it's one shot. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. How about you guys? Are any of you looking forward to seeing the new DuckTales cartoon? Yeah, I am. Uh, David Tennant as Scrooge? <laughs> yeah, totally. It's going to be interesting. Ah. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. When is it coming out anyway? You know, I actually forget. To the Googles. Oh, besides uh, fan fiction, I, I think most of the time entertaining me is mostly the, what's it called this? Um, Samurai Jack uh, season, like the new one. Like Samurai Jack 2017. That's been really entertaining. Okay, it has not announced the official date yet. But it's supposed to be second quarter or third quarter of 2017, and is already approved for two sequel, uh, two seasons. Oof, that good, eh? All right. Yeah, I'm just looking interested to see <laughs> David Tennant voicing Scrooge McDuck. Yeah, there is a clip of him doing so. Oh yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, he 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 brings he he does his own style of it, but it's like, yeah, yeah, that's definitely uh, Scrooge McDuck. Plus, also the fact that that all the, the all the nephews now have their own personality instead of just being carbon copies of each oh, other. Oh yeah, and the voices you you can distinguish who's who. Like I remember in the old days, they sound alike. And who's Huey, Dewey, and Louie? Even Silver Quill didn't even bother to remember who's their name. Oh well, yeah, those are their names. But the thing is that there was like no difference between them personality wise. I mean, heck, I mean, one of, one of the best jokes to this to the trailer to it was uh, when Webby was basically asking all these questions about the uh, them and Donalds. It's like, which one of you is the evil triplet? They all say Louie. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, oh, that was good. All righty then. So that's, well, I, I guess that's what we're looking forward to. So yay. So anyway, <clears throat> before we officially leave, I need to thank some people. The Patreon is supposed to be exact. And if you guys at home would like to, well, join the Patreon hype train, you can do so at www.patreon.com slash the MBS show. A dollar gets you a thank you and full access to whatever you have. Five dollars will get you, well, the what you call this? Give us a suggestion what to talk or review. It's been fun doing so because I think the recent one we did was about the main six character arc. Are they finished with what they have to do, or do they have more to offer? So that costs you guys five bucks if you want us to discuss something like that, or there's something else in the future. Who knows? And mentioning thank yous, I would like to thank the Cricket, Twilight Genesis. Imdragatorius, Starstream, and Master of Lag. Thank you so much for the support, guys. And, bye, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Will. I've been Twy. And we'll guys catch you next week with another amazing episode in the show. See ya. Bye. Toodles, everybody.